Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad therein, for it was the Lord that made us and not we ourselves. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise for it was grace that brought my liberty I'll never know how Christ came to love me so, but he looked beyond all of my faults and saw my need. And I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous was that grace that brought my falling soul. But he looked beyond all of my faults, and he saw my needs. Praise the Lord. I came across this story from this guy. I think he was from Texas. So wherever he was from really doesn't matter. But he said he was a crip at one time. And he said he, before he was 18 years old, he was from 14, he did life in prison from 14 to, to 21. And he said that he hated white people. He said he would rob white people. He resented the black man, not black boys, but black men, because he grew up without his father. He would listen to a woman to some degree, but he resented the black man. This is what he said, according to his father being absent in his life and being told that you couldn't trust that he couldn't trust white people he didn't like white people resentment can also be a type of hatred as well, a, bitter, a bitterness. When you're bitter towards someone and resent someone, feel untreated unfairly, um, there's nothing good 
in resentment. Nothing good. Um, he said, but while he was doing time, he was calling out his gang signs and talking about what he would do and that's all he knew that was the he as he would say that was the culture it was in the music I won't call out any of the artists but he called out some of the artists he said even in the music it taught you how to cook crack how to gang bang and rape gang bang women which was rape curse hate and just basically be rebellious. This is what he said. But he said what changed is something on the inside of him was the fact that two Caucasian women and two black men stayed on the case to try to help him. And he said he wasn't doing anything positive for them to help him but they went to the court, and the court asked, basically, if I put it in my own words, because I can't, I just remember the basics of the reason why I wanted to talk about forgiveness. He said that he wasn't doing anything to be forgiven for. He was representing Crip. He hated men, black men. He hated white people, period. That's what he said. He said he hated white people. He would rob them. But, of course, we know if he was a gangbanger, he was also killing and going against people of his own race because that's what they do. So even though they hated other race or he hated other race, you you and I know if you go and listen to any, you can go online now to prove me if I'm wrong, anyone that calls themselves a gangbanger, usually they're against another gangbanger. Some of them against their own their own set. There's some confusion there. But what struck me was, because I said something about forgiveness, he said he had, the reason why he was in prison, he killed another guy. I think he was before he was even 14 years old, he killed someone. And he said, not only did the, the white people that he hated, two white women helped him, not only did the black men who he resented, who he wouldn't listen to a black man, so it was more than resentment, there's hatred there too. And we see a lot of that going on, fathers absent from homes and, and people like, you can't tell me anything. And they usually get over on their mothers. So he hated white women, but two white women were helping him. He hated white people, two white women. Women were helping him. He hated black men. He said resented, but it's hatred. I'm going to put it in my own words. Because if you re resent someone, you don't really want to hear anything you have to say. So if someone, so if someone you feel like someone does you some type of damage or harm, and even though you might try to downplay it and say, no, I don't hate them, but I resent them. But if you don't want to hear anything they have to say, they can't help you except they push past you because you're not going to do anything for them to help you. So it have to be something on the inside of them. And I think that's what the guy was saying. He was saying they weren't getting any help from him because he, he didn't particularly like them. Hate, he hated them. Two men, two women, and the family of the guy he killed. He said the family of the guy he killed told him that they forgave him in the courtroom. So he has two white people that all his life he's been robbing and stealing from white people along with others. I don't say that's the only ones he, because if he's a gangbanger, it doesn't stop at just there. And he said the culture and the music taught him what he was doing. And he said some of them in the culture, even as far as the rappers, he stopped looking at the rappers because he went to some of the funerals and find out that they was just a bunch of liars. They wasn't living the life, and he named some of them, that they said 
They weren't really gangbangers. They weren't really selling dope and drugs. Some of them were, some weren't. But the ones he you know, called out, they were not. He said so they were basically fraudulent. But that's the life he had been initiated into, raping, gangbanging, gangbanging women, which he even came out and said himself was raping women. Felt like if you came to have sex with one of his homies, you're going to have... You were gonna have sex with everybody. It wasn't gonna be ass. You're gonna have sex. And see, people go through a lot of things. But he said, to make a long story short, to get to what I'm really talking about, which is forgiveness, is that there were two white women that helped him, two black men that helped him, and a family that forgave him. And he ended up saying that this being in the system. Because they asked his mother, they said, "Miss, they called his name. I won't call his name." Said, "Do you, do you, do you want him to be released?" And she said, "No." I think he had already did three or four years, so now he would have to do three more years. And he looked over his mother. And he said, "Because mother knows best." Now maybe mother doesn't know what goes on inside prisons, but what she probably was seeing her son do on the outside and seeing people whether they got to her talked to her behind his back and told her to like let him do a little bit more time because he's not he's not civil in his mind enough I don't know but the, but he said his mother said no I don't want him set free so he did like all together seven years and then I think he did more time um I had to keep going over the story I didn't get it all or some of I was confused about um I don't think that when you're gang well he said it, what he what what the title was he said he stopped being a, a gangbanger once the family forgave him now hearing him talk I didn't I didn't see the hardness leave out of him but he said that he had changed that's what he said he said, from being that type of person, and when you hardened, because he said he had seen people like himself just turning teenager, even younger, I, I'm thinking that he impl implicated, impl implemented, implicated, that he basically initiated that. People, young people, he said they had killed their mother and father, both their mother and their father. He said he's seen that. He said he's seen young people kill their mother or their father and their mother and stab their best friends over 96 times. Then he said, I wasn't really a bad kid. There's no bad kids. Now, I heard people say oh, bad children. I don't even like to use the word kids. He said kids. Uh, kids are goats, but children. I disagree with that. There are bad children. There's good and there's bad. But when people give you an excuse for being the way you are, or when you have an excuse for being the way you are, it can kind of make you self-righteous. Now, I don't have to be right. I'm just going by something that I heard to bring out something else that I'm going to bring out, which is Jesus Christ forgiving us. And the reason why God so loved the world, John 3, 16, to bring us to Jesus, to forgive us because we need to be forgiven. This young man may be a, have been like many. Maybe even you listen to me. Maybe it's not the same story you have. You could be of a different, uh, I don't know what his ethnicity was, but he said he hated white people, so I guess he wasn't white. But then I've known some white folks to hate white folks and black folks to hate black folks. And that's in America, white, black. So, in other words, to make it ethnically uh, correct, there are people in their own ethnicity that kill their own ethnicity and kill their own people in their own ethnicity, their own culture, their own family. As he said, as I said, he said he's seen people kill their own father and mother. Wouldn't they be the same culture? And if you want to get into color barriers, wouldn't they be the same color as you? So if people will kill their own father and mother, ugh. What 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 will they do to someone else? But thank God for the women and men 
and the family that forgave him. Because even though me listening to him, he sounded real hardened and his jargon, his way of speaking was still very vindictive and bitter, but he learned, learned the system. And you have to be careful of people that learned, learn the system. I learned that even in church. When you have a person that's really evil, evil men and evil women, and they come in and they learn the love of God, they learn the love of the fan, of the, the, the pastor or the church family, and they learn how to manipulate, if so, because some actually do take that love, engulf it, embrace it, and become better men and women. But some, like the devil himself, this is what I'm trying to show you, the devil came from the best family. The devil came from the best system, but yet the devil became resentful of his father, which is the author and finisher of the best family and the best system and implemented his own system using the graphs, diagrams, schematics and teachings that he learned from his father. So you have to be careful of men and women who hate, resent, and may never get delivered, but they become smart enough to know how to adapt to the system to look as if they're doing better. That's a dangerous person. Now, some of you the right now that I'm talking to, You were born in sin, S-I-N, Satan inside of you, S-I-N, Satan inside of you, the system inside. You were programmed for a system of Satanism, and we can just say the world. You wouldn't even know it was Satan. You probably wouldn't even know Satan exists or God exists if someone didn't mention the word God or devil. That's too spooky. That's too mystif mystifying for you. And as I said in other teaching that in 1 Timothy 3.16 says, without controversy, without an argument, great is the mystery. Mystery is something that's hard to understand. Hard to understand God. Hard to understand devil. Something you can't see. Something that may not be tangible to you. It's hard for some of you to understand people, places, and things that you do see. So how much harder will it, and it'll be understood why it will be that much harder for you to understand a god or a devil or because you it's hard for us to understand the system that we're living in and sometimes the things that we say we understand we really don't understand we just copy what others say but the bible says if you can believe that god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for you not just you but the world but i want to talk to you because you can't worry about the world until you get your well you could worry about the world but you need to worry about you getting closer to god because every individual in the world is going to have to stake their own claim with god you're going to have to stake your claim with god you need to know that however you were born whether like that guy i was talking about that resented his father, didn't know his father or his mother or the their parents, the children that killed their parents, their father and their mother because of whatever reason they did it. It's not going to be a good reason, but uh, there's always an exception to the rule, but it don't sound good. If people can have so much hate in them at such a young age, someone even brought out a point, man, the devil might have gotten kicked out of heaven at a young age if we deal with age. Because these young people are killing people at a young age. They're having sex at a young age. Whatever age you are as a grown adult, what age did you start your rebellion? And you are a victim only on the, on the well, I won't say only, but you are a victim Meaning you really didn't have anything to do with by, by the fact of your father 
all of our fathers and mothers coming together and having sex and bringing us into the world. That's where we are a victim at because we didn't ask to come into this world. So we're a product. We're, we were made to be a product of what's here. But now that we are here, we can't just blame our fathers. We can't just blame our mothers. We can't just blame the black man, the white man, the black woman, the white woman, or whoever is brown, yellow, or red. We can't blame other humans. We have to take some responsibilities. And if you hear the message of God, that God loves you and God wants to forgive you, it's through Jesus Christ. Because a lot of us hold resentment. We hold unforgiveness. And it's a poison to our system, whether it's me or whether it's you. It poisons me if I don't forgive. It poisons you if you don't forgive me. In other words, you gotta, you have to try to find the right in wrong situations or get away from wrong situations because it poisons your mind when you keep it in your mind and you're not filtering anything righteous in your mind to make you a better man, a better woman. The God so loved the world. God so loved you. That's what it's saying. That he gave his only begotten son for you. And not only you. That if we would believe. You don't have to know. But can you believe that God loves you? If you don't believe anyone else loves you. Can you believe that God, the one that made man, the one that made woman, the one that made humanity, the one that is the reason for us breathing the air that we breathe. Can you believe that he loves you? And something else that I got out of that. That young man who's now a grown man who wasn't doing anything for the two women to help him, for the two men to help him, that he resented, hated, and for the family to forgive him. He did the very opposite to the family and, and got the opposite results. He did something for a family to hate him. He killed their son, their brother, or whomever the male he was. He killed their family member. But they did the opposite. They forgave him. And the only thing that they could tell the judge was he has potential. You might be looking at someone else that you can't forgive. If you help them because they had potential. This young man, after they helped him, he still did bad things. Eventually, he ended up doing some righteous things, but he still, he didn't, it didn't just get out of his system. So imagine God sending Jesus into the world and they hanging Jesus on the cross. Jesus comes down from heaven to talk to people about God, to present God, God's word, and the healing for each one he spoke to for the world. And they just resented him. They hated him. They hated him. They resented him enough to kill him. That's how far resentment went. To hanging him on the cross, according to the scripture. To taking his life. But at the same time, it was already predestined in the plan, in the schematic, that that's what would happen. They're going to kill you. But they're not really going to kill you. You're going to allow them to kill you because you could kill all of them. But you're going to allow them to go through the process of their resentment and their hatred and their oppression, depression, their vileness of Satanism in them and let them go all the way. And then at the end, you're going to come back to life like a slap in their face. And still give people a chance to be saved to be born again to come to God God forgives you or should I say he will forgive you some would just say God forgive you 
but you need to come to Jesus. And if you know you're doing anything, anything, it don't matter what it is, you're not dotting some I for God. You're not crossing some T for God. Should you be a little bit more forgiving towards other people? Because in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, it talks about being perfect. If you can claim that you're not perfect, forget everybody else. Because, you know, when we talk that, oh, nobody's perfect. Don't talk about nobody or anyone because you don't know everyone. Talk about you. Are you perfect? I know I am not. So that's what makes me forgive other people, even when I do hold some type of resentment or some type of bad. Because they may, maybe they did something really to hurt me. I mean, you don't want to resent a person for nothing, right? But you got to, I have to let it go. Because it's about God. And let's take that young man who killed someone because of how his mind was damaged. Many people's minds damaged. My mind could be damaged to a degree. Your mind could be damaged to a degree. But we all have potential. That's why God so loved the world. Because we're all damaged by coming into this world. We're all damaged. We're all mentally ill. We're all sick in sin. With Satan in our nature, S-I-N, S-I-N, Satan inside you, Satan in your nature, S-I-N, sickness inside you, the system inside you, in your nature, the system in your nature, S-I-N, the sickness in your nature, S-I-N, the selfishness in your nature, S-I-N, and that's me as well. We need salvation in our nature, S-I-N. We need to study the Lord in our nature, S-I-N. Because Satan in our nature will destroy us. But salvation in our nature, S-I-N. It changes the sin to the love of God. God forgives you, but in order for you to know or prove to God that you accept him forgiving you, you must come to Jesus and work on your character, work on your mind, your heart, work on your mind, your heart, work on your mind, your heart, your mind, your heart, your brain, which is your mind and your heart. Now you might be here. But that pumps the blood through your body. But when this changes, you change. How you think, how you operate. And a lot of people, they confess, like Jesus said, I think it was in Matthew 15, it, 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 and it's in other scriptures, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far, far from me. And I know many men and many women have said that about the people they deal with. This man honors me with his lips. This woman honors me with her lips. But where's their heart? The heart means where's your deeds? Where's the proof? Anyone can say they love the Lord or love him or love her or love this or love that. When everything or is every when things are smooth, even if everything is not going right, but when things are smooth. Or what about when things are not smooth with God? So people, because people get angry with God. People have admitted to being resentful and hateful against God. Oh, their father died, their mother died. Don't the scriptures tell us we're going to die? Oh, my father got sick, my mother got sick, or my so-and-so, my loved one got sick. Doesn't the Bible tell us we're going to get sick? But there's a day that we can resurrect from that, and we can resurrect from right here. If God could bring a brother out of prison or take a brother from hating white folks, hating black men, and change his mind. Can't God change my mind? Can't God change your mind? And I think he might even say he didn't believe in no God or he said he was God or so, I, don't, I don't know, something. But he had to believe in a God because right in front of his face, the people that he hated were helping him. See, that's like going to the doctor or going to the hospital or going through a flood. And my dad said something about that several times. It's easy for people to hate people, but when certain worldly catastrophes happen, when people have to 
come together and help each other, even if they wouldn't say good morning to each other, good afternoon or good evening. But when you have to come together as a community, as a neighbor, and then you learn what the scriptures mean when it said love your neighbor as you love yourself. And we may not love know what love is like 1 John 4 and 8 or 4 6. Anyway, in the book of 1 John chapter 4, I think it's 4 and 6 or 4 and 8 that says God is love. We may not know that type of love. If you put Satan in, 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 in Satan's love, it'll be Satan's love. If you put Jesus in Jesus' love, it'll be Jesus' love. So if you put my love in your love, it'll be my type of love and your type of love. And my love may not be your type of love and your love may not be my type of love. And definitely Satan's love is not Jesus' type of love and Jesus' love is not Satan's type of love. So it depends on where we're getting our love from. But the best thing that we know that love will consist of, no matter where it's coming from, it will be it will initiate to some degree the best. Even if it's Satan who's a hater. If he talks love, he have to pretend that he's on your side. See, if it's the Lord, the Lord don't pretend. The Lord is for you. Satan is to destroy you, but in order for it to come across as love, it has to seem like, I like him. I like her. Get close to you. Remember with Eve? He had to get close to Eve. He had to pretend like he was her friend. So love is a type of friendship. Love is a type of, I'm connected to you. I, I, I'm, I'm for you. I'm not against you. But all the time he was against her. And which caused her to be against herself and against her man and blah, blah, blah. But when we talk about Jesus, Jesus' love is always to bring the best out of us. It's not no deception. It's not no demise. It's not no bad ulterior motive. It's always for the positive of you, me, and all of us. For God so loved the world. Now, God is a forgiving God. But will you ask him for forgiveness? Even if you could think in your life, close your eyes, someone that you don't forgive. What good is it not forgiving them? Let's say you gave someone some money. They ain't pay you back. You still living, right? It didn't kill you. Let's say you gave someone of whatever you gave of yourself, your time, your efforts, whatever. You feel like they didn't reciprocate it the way you wanted it. Forgive them. Because if you look at your life with God, God wakes you up every morning from the time you was a little boy to a little girl to a grown man to a grown woman. How many times do you think you dumped negatively on God and didn't give God the, his due benevolence and his due respect? So we're not God. So if God can forgive us and give us a chance, forgive them and give them a chance, or don't give them a chance as if you feel like you can't take being hurt, you can't, you're not strong enough, then you need to separate yourself and get stronger to God. Because you're going to meet all types of people in the world and you may be like the people that you resent and don't even know it. I've met people and talked to them. They are cunning, conniving. But they can see it in other persons, but they can't see it in themselves. But they'll, they'll take your eyeballs out of your eyes if they had the opportunity. Or if they needed to, they'll take them out right in front of your face if they decided that your eyeballs is what they need. <laughs> uh, Lord, let me shorten this down because I start adding more stuff because in you, some of you couldn't keep up. But if God could help him, and he has through people, and God has helped many people through people, God is helping you through someone, and you can help someone else by the God that's in you. And praise the Lord. Just keep trying to be the best person that you can be. Forgive. That's the key. Forgive. Forgive because resentment Heartache, pain only brings about more resentment, heartache, and pain unless you start working on it with something better. And that's what the Lord God is all about. Believe in something better than what you've been going through. Okay? See beyond what you've been seeing and what you've been going through. See God. And if you can't see God through the spirit, like I said, it's not tangible enough for you. Get in the scriptures about Jesus Christ. 
turn your your TV on and put it in your uh, in your phone and just say, I want it. What about Jesus? Jesus. Try to learn about Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Praise the Lord. No man can come to the Father but by Him. But God has been long suffering with us because He knows we're slow. We think we're so fast and we're so smart, but we're slow when it comes to coming to God. Because that's the ultimate intelligence. Praise the Lord. Every grandfather, father, and son, may God help you. And every grandmother, mother, and daughter, may God help you. May God help me. May he help us all.